family is another proof that God has a sense of humor. I think marriage had to be a joke. <laughs> had to be. The whole idea of marriage is just, it had to be a joke. Man and woman, imagine God saying to the angels, hey, come here, look at this, what I did. It's a man and a woman, I put them down there. Uh, two entirely different creatures, different sensibilities, different ways of processing things, emotional levels. Uh, they're not alike in any way, and I'm going to make them spend the rest of their lives together. <laughs> going to be awesome. Uh, he started with man first. You know the story? He made man first, and then he took a rib from that man and made woman. And clearly, that was the rib that we used to use to read minds. Look for the humor in your life, right? Don't be, don't be hung up and, and correct and tolerant. Just, I mean, just have fun. Just have fun. There's, there's comedy everywhere. We don't communicate very well anymore in this culture. That's the problem, too. We used to be able to communicate. We used to have uh, words. Some of you old people remember words? Remember those? It was like, <laughs> kids, you don't know what we're talking about, but there was, there was a, an alphabet, and you could take letters from that alphabet and arrange them in certain ways to form these things called words, and those could be used to communicate ideas. And now we just text people things. Um, emojis. I got, a, uh, I got an emoji from my kids a couple of months ago, and it was just a smiley face, an explosion, and a pile of poop with eyes in it. And, and that meant, happy birthday, Dad. But it wasn't always that way. It used to be we had words, we would communicate. I did some research. William Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, uh, had an active vocabulary of 54,000 words, 54,000. Today in the United States, we, all of us, have an active vocabulary of 3,000 words, which is why when we read Shakespeare, we're lost. We're, we're like, what light through yonder, whereupon what breaketh on the... Yeah. And just put in a DVD. I don't, I don't pay for Netflix so you kids can sit there and read. And I started thinking about little kids in the 16th century. Those kids had a bigger vocabulary than I have now as an adult because they were exposed to that language, which means I am not smart enough to read fairy tales to 16th century children. I'd be lost in the kids' section at the library in the 16th century. Can you, ma can you imagine what their books were like? It'd be like, <clears throat> in time past, though not long ago, there lived pigs in stature little and number three, who, being of an age both entitled and inspired to seek their fortune, did set about to do thusly. <laughs> when they had traveled a distance, pig number first spake, saying, Hearken, brethren, heed this tempestuous realm. Tarry we long from hearth and home. We shall fare, I fear, not well. <laughs> And so, being collectively agreed, but individually impelled, the diminutive swine set about each to erect for himself an abode. <laughs> Pig numbered first did construct his house from straw. Pig numbered second did likewise, though rather not from straw, instead from sticks, meanwhile, unique in his imagining. Pig numbered three did erect as his domicile, stalwart and garish, a structure made from brick entirely. <laughs> Ah, but soon there happened along, as is frequently the scenario in classic tale of protagonist pig or red-hooded child. <laughs> A wolf, carnivorous nature in full season, he called out to the straw-ensconced swine, saying, Pray thee, little pig, grant me entrance. But pig one recalled with sage foreboding that he is mad who trusts in the tameness of a belly-pinched wolf and responded immediately, Nay, it shall not be, indeed, not by wit or whiskered jowl. <laughs> to this most expected response, the wolf replied immediately, Then steal thyself, little pig. Forthwith shall I endeavor, in blowing means both huffing and puffing, to dismantle yon flippin' flaxen fortress. <laughs> Whereupon there issued forth from the wolf an exhale of gale proportions <laughs> that quickly rendered straw hovel to dregs and dross and carried aloft piglet and shattered quarters both. 
Exposed now to claw and fang, piglet one made haste, wolf in pursuit to the stick festoon sanctum of peccary secondary. <laughs> Causing Pig 2 to cry out in dismay, well, this knots my knickers. <laughs> Marshalling a feral wolf to my doorstep is nowhere among those endeavors amenable or congenial. A thousand pardons, begged one. It would seem the beast's painful breath hath purged me of home and sound judgment alike. <laughs> The malevolent blast of the wolf's exhale splattered sick and swine shack and short his sanctimonious scolding simultaneously. <laughs> Lo and behold, squealed too, stand we now amid wooden wreckage, tremulous and vulnerable, with nary a strategy for eschewing the canine devourer looming in deadly proximity. <laughs> Strategy, exclaimed one, while tis noble the contemplation of tactical particularities, pressed as we are with time restraints, forbidding detailed strategical conversation, I would urge we run. <laughs> Whether by their own fleet-footed competence or the wolf's windless attitude, the bantam porkers arrived at their ultimate kindred neighbors in expugnable brick ingress unscathed. Upon the third pig's door, with urgent hooves they pounded, calling out, unbar this entrance and with haste we beseech thee. The third pig hailed from the American colonies. And was possessing a vocabulary substantially less robust than his impromptu visitors replied, Say what? <laughs> of hysteria, lest we fall forthwith to the ravenous appetency of yonder approaching carnivore. Still confounded by their importunate words, Pig 3 did render ajar his portal, whereupon one and two spilled through and collapsed beyond his threshold, enervated. So y'all just wanted to come in? <laughs> Why didn't you say that? hiss of the wolf could be heard. Pray thee, pigs, grant me entrance. The wolf said one and two. Wolf said three. What do you suppose he wants? <laughs> he seeks to gain purchase within. Indeed, he would occupy this very alcove where he but afforded the most meager of opportunity. Right. <laughs> I reckon I'll just ask him what he wants. Under no circumstances, squealed too, flinging self against portal. There is naught to be gained a costing external opponent, save our own immediate demise. What did you say about my mama? <laughs> House and occupants were again engulfed in a malevolent blast of wolfish wind. The foundation shook, the frame rattled, and lo, to the astonished eyes of piglets and encroaching scoundrel alike stood the third pig's lodging undaunted. Aghast and befuddled, two queried of three, how does against such relentless and torrential onslaught this domicile endure? Pig three puffed out chest, tapped a hoof to the hearth and responded, it's American made. <laughs> Hey, did you know Dry Bar Comedy has its own app? No, you didn't. Don't lie. They do. Here it is. You can download it right now and watch my whole special.